Today, C4 would like to highlight two case studies. The first one would be this copying submarine scandal to demonstrate how conflict of interest happened in this case. So, I think everyone remembers this case. Um, we have two submarines that could not dive, and we also witnessed the horrifying murder of Altantuya because she was also connected to this case for asking the commissions back a few years ago. So in this case, I would like to remind everyone that you know, this case took place years ago in 2002 where the purchase of the submarines was inked between the French government and also the Malaysian government and the corruption that is highlighted in this case is in, uh, involves the payment of kickbacks and commissions amounting to half a billion ringgit. And these commissions uh, and kickbacks are yeah, paid uh, to Perry and Carson Renoir. So I would like to highlight who is behind this company. So on top you can see Rafael Baginda. This man is a close associate of our former Prime Minister, Mr. Najib Razak. So, how do they do it? You know, what transpired following the purchase of these two submarines? So, the delusion and complicity of the top leadership, which is very clear in this case. First, the Defence Minister at that time, at the material time, was our former Prime Minister, Najib Razak. And Najib actually appointed Razak Badinga to negotiate the deal with the French authorities and also the French shipbuilding companies. And that, uh, uh, it's very important to point uh, the fact that Razak Badinga was not an official uh, associated with the Defence Ministry, but he was handpicked by Najib Razak to negotiate the deal. So where is the conflict? I think in this case, it clearly shows that the connection that Najib Razak had with Razak Baginda enabled Razak Baginda to enter into the contract and also to get payments of kickbacks and commissions amounting to half a billion ringgit to a company set up by him called Perimega And what is shocking is the fact that Amno was the biggest beneficiary to receive the legal commissions and kickback emanating from the purchase of the two submarines called Scopy. <coughs> How did he do it? You know, what is the Buddhist government? So in this case, we could, give, we could see that public bodies, for example, the Lembaga Tabung Haji and also the Lembaga Tabung Antara Malaysia, these two bodies, public bodies, were used to funnel legal funds emanating from the purchase of uh, submarines. And we could see the involvement of Modi Wakarote, this guy um, who has so many positions at that time and also who's complicit in enabling corruption to happen in this copying submarine case, where you could see the first uh, connection was he's a good friend of Najib Raza. And he's also the deputy chairman of Bosset Holding Burhat. And Bosset has 20% shares in Perry McCart, a company that was set up to receive um, one uh, half a billion commissions and kickbacks. And he's also, at that time, sat on the board of uh, Afin Ben Burhat. So Afin Ben Burhat acted as the bank for Perry McCart. And Afin Ben Burhat actually approved the payment of legal commissions and kickbacks. And he's also the chief executive of Lembaga Tabung Haji, sorry, Lembaga Tabung Angkatan Tentera, LTAT. And, surprise, surprise, he's also the chairman of the YMDB, Burhat, the company that was involved in the grand corruption scandal of YMDB that saw the fall of the person national government. How did they funnel the illegal funds? So you can see how they use shell companies. Shell companies are companies that are inactive. Uh, companies are used to maneuver, you know, to, to make sure that financial uh, maneuvers could be done. So shell companies in this case were used to funnel illegal funds, to cover up the tracks. And we could see there are three companies, 
that were involved in this case. First, KS Omalawud, Barry Mekar, and Terra Sassi. So Terra Sassi, um, there are two uh, companies by the name of Terra Sassi. First, Terra Sassi is Scrambler Hat, which is registered in Kuala Lumpur, and Terra Sassi Limited, a Hong Kong Limited, registered in Hong Kong. So let's see the connection here. So Barry Mekar is the company that was set up to receive the illegal kickbacks and commissions. So Barry Mekar is controlled by Reza Fabinga, and it's owned by a company set up, which is called KS on And who owns this company? Mazinda Maksan owns KS on and KS on owns Barry So Mazinda Maksan is the wife of Reza Fabinga. That's the connection. And also, Terra Sassi, Terra also has a huge share in Terra Sassi, so he controls Terra Sassi. Sir Rimper Hat, which is registered in Kuala Lumpur, in Malaysia. And also, his dad, Abdul Malik Malaysia, owns Terra Sassi Hong Kong Limited to receive uh, some of the commissions and legal feedbacks from this company deal. Okay, so I think in this case, it's quite clear how you know the use um, of public bodies, the creation of shell companies, um, are used yeah, as well as in this case to cover up uh, the trail and also the money flows in order to enable corruption to happen in this case. Um, so I would like to summarize yeah, how the, those involved in this corruption scandal did what they did back you know, uh, in 2002. Until now, they are not accountable in this uh, country. So the first one would be you can see the connection between Razak Pahinda and Ajit Razak, the former prime minister. So they have a close relationship with Najib Razak. He's uh, Najib Razak's aide. So Razak Pahinda is uh, Najib Razak's aide. And secondly, Razak Pahinda was not a personnel of the defense ministry, but was handpicked by Najib Razak to negotiate the agreement. And thirdly, Bodies like Lembaga Tabung Hatan and Tendra LD80 and Lembaga Tabung Haji were used to funnel illegal funds. And fourthly, Lodin Wok Kamarudi, a close friend of Najib Razak, who was also, who was also the chief executive of the um, and also chairman of one MDB, he was also involved in this case by overseeing, he was the one who oversaw the transfer of the illegal state backs and commissions amount into half a million ringgit, uh, because he's also uh, at that time. Uh, who's sitting on the board of Huffington Bank. And fifth point I would like to make is the illegal funds were channeled to Barry McCarthy Renner Hat, which was set up a few months before the copy deal was signed in 2002. And also how the money was also channeled to KF on Bangladesh, owned by the, uh, Raza, uh, Raza Baginda's wife, Masinda Mahzan. And also how some of the commissions were part you know, uh, in companies like Terra Sassi registered in Malaysia, and also Terra Sassi Hong Kong Limited, which is registered in Hong Kong. So this is the modus operandi, how conflict of interest manifests itself in this case, and how it eventually leads to corruption. So how do we know about all this? Where do we get the facts to demonstrate conflict of interest, which eventually leads to corruption? So Suara, in 2009, Suara is a human rights watchdog, filed a case in the French court to request the French authorities to initiate a proceeding, a preliminary uh, inquiry into this copy submarine deal because we failed to get answers from our politicians back then. So in 2009, Suara lost the report. I was involved uh, at the time as we will. And then in 2012, yeah, three years after we filed the case in the French court, uh, three years uh, after the court concluded uh, the investigation, they called us to be present before the judge, and we, as party to this complaint, were allowed access to all the documents seized from DCNS, Thales, and all the companies involved in um, this case. And all these facts are derived from the documents that were given to us uh, in 2012. So I think. Uh, a few weeks back, two French lawyers representing Suara for this case came to Malaysia. So we managed to bring them to see uh, various authorities. We also met with the AG. So we are telling the, the government of Malaysia that, you know, uh, we know that this case has been ongoing for so long in France and 
we want justice to also be done in this country. And uh, meetings were really positive. Uh, investigations are ongoing right now. And I would like to also remind everyone that Raza Baginda is still free. Uh, he's just, you know, he's roaming around free and he's like acting like nothing happened. And I think it's important to remind him that he's got an indictment hanging, you know, in, 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 in uh, the French court. So indictment means that the French court found sufficient evidence to try him for corruption in the French court. So I think uh, the MACC also has power to initiate the investigation uh, because this case was committed uh, in, in, in France and also it's connected to what's happening in, in Malaysia. So now I think we all should hope that you know, those involved, including our former Prime Minister, will be charged uh, soon because the, the evidence is just compelling. It's just a matter of writing to the French authorities to get all the documents transferred to Malaysia and then we can get justice and maybe find answers to our questions. Thank you so much.